Uh, we're also just going to vote on a very few changes to our bylaws, which Scott is going to share on the screen right now. And as soon as those get up there, we will just go through them. It'll take about two minutes, I think. And then we'll, and we'll go, where is it? Are they up there? I am having a little screen problem here. Oops, there they are, sorry about that. Okay, so uh, we are going to take in the first line, we're going to take out recruits new members from the role of the chair. That is not uh, his or her role to recruit new members. In the secretary's uh, job description, we're going to add the words may help maintain the membership roster because currently our tech support guy is doing that. Uh, we're gonna renumber on the left, you'll see in the third column, the third row, renumber a couple of the items to different numbers so that we can insert an officer position for tech support. I think we're gonna call that tech support instead of webmaster. That's for Jeff Peach, who's been considered an officer by all of us for all of this time, but it was never really in uh, that position was not considered, a, was not, we didn't even think we needed it when we first started out. So we're going to define that as an officer position. And on the right, that person, you know, tech support will help maintain the website, MailChimp, the membership roster, answer inquiries to the coalition and assist with other tasks. That's, those are things that Jeff does. And then we're going to add a new section 7H which will be under the officers section. And it'll say the officers may create and invite others to join a steering committee to advise and help administer the activities of the coalition. So that's sort of what we have now is uh, for this starting this year as a steering committee uh, with the, that is consists of the officers and, and Bob and I as former officers and, and Bob Garza and, uh, and Kristen. And then the last one, we used to have a section nine called committees and that will continue, but instead of calling them committees, we're going to call them working groups. So we'll say the coalition may establish working groups as needed and everywhere that the word committee appears, we will substitute the word working groups. Does anybody have any questions about these uh, proposed wording changes to the bylaws? Please unmute yourself and say so if you do. Hearing none, then do I hear a- um, Hold it, hold it. Do yeah. I get a raise? Do I get a raise with that promotion <laughs> or what? <laughs> yes, you get a raise from uh, nothing to nothing. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's um, a percent of the budget, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> um, so do I hear a motion to accept, uh, do I hear a motion to, yes, accept these proposed changes to the bylaws? Anybody? So moved from Bob. Is there a second? Anybody? Second. I'll second it. Okay. All in favor, wave your hand at the camera. Anybody opposed, wave your hand at the camera. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Back to you, Scott. All right. So thanks to Susan and Bob for kicking us off. And, and thanks to everyone who really paved the way um, leading up to this point and, and for your confidence you're putting in me to, to carry a bit of the weight of the, the, the council going forward. Um, this has been, I'll say, one of the more easy transitions I have ever made in the not-for-profit sector. Um, it, uh, you know, kudos to Virginia and the two Bobs and Susan and Jeff and everyone else and, of course, all the community leaders we have out there in the field. Um, tonight, we have a pretty, uh, pretty robust agenda here. Um, so we've already ticked off those first two. We'll get into the usual reminders in a moment. And then we're going to have introduction to community partners. We always have community partner reports. Um, but um, this time around, um, we are asking the uh, community partners to um, to uh, share a little bit more about um, who they are, what they do, and where they fit into the disaster management related to fires. Um, so we're bringing in a whole bunch of people that um, you know most of, and then maybe some, some new faces and people that work behind the scenes. Names you hear tonight, you'll be able to put a face to those names. Um, then we're gonna preview uh, the topics 
for the year ahead. Big piece of what we do here, of course, is education, and we'll talk to you about those education topics that we're going to be covering each month, um, at least for the next few months. We've got the agenda relatively set. And then the main piece for tonight is going to be our monthly, uh, for our monthly education spotlight, is going to be homeowners insurance. So uh, I'll be kicking it over to Virginia to uh, moderate this section to give you state level perspective, county level perspective, local perspective, and then taking it right to your front door with a, a number of experts on those topics. Uh, and then we'll talk about uh, community recertification briefly, and then uh, I'll be soliciting more help, of course, for working groups. So with that, let's jump in, uh, talk about some of those reminders that we had on each month. So please sign up for Code Red and spread the word within each of your neighborhoods and communities to sign up and go to mynevadacounty.com. From there, you might have to scroll down. If you've got a wee little laptop uh, like I do, uh, it's not immediately visible, so you're gonna have to scroll down, wildfire preparedness at the bottom of your screen. Uh, and then under the emergency alerts bar, um, there are some options for Code Red. This is one of a couple places, as you all know, you can sign up for Code Red, but again, please uh, spread the word. Um, then bookmark the Nevada County dashboard. Again, we're right back to our MyNevadaCounty.com, this time on the Go tab. And at present, this is the top option, the Ready Nevada County dashboard. Subject to change, but for now, it's right there. Um, so when the whole world opens back up um, and you are sitting across the table from friends and family, you can reach across the table, grab their cell phone, and bookmark this to their favorites for them, since I'm sure you have already. Um, click in there, and then when you go back to that bookmark, it'll go right to the dashboard. So let's just all take a moment and enjoy that right-hand and left-hand margins of this page where there is zero going on in our county on the left side, and on the right side, we only have to worry about snow and rain. Um, during an emergency, call 211 for information. Do not bog down dispatch by calling 911 unless it truly is an emergency. So for info, again, 211 is key. And then plan your evacuation destination. Where will you go if you have to leave your house? And then scout your route. Don't wait until you have to use that path. Figure it out now. Uh, and then make sure you have an out of area contact. Um, so someone that you can reach out to if uh, you have to leave the area and cell phones aren't working and you can't reach anyone locally here. So um, with that, um, we're gonna get into our introduction of community partners. We have a, we have a whole lot of them. Um, we, um, we're, we're fortunate enough that our county um, has a lot of attention uh, and a lot of focus on this topic of fire, um, how to prepare for it, um, how to mitigate that risk and respond to it. So um, for our partners, first of all, thank you all for being here. I know you all have day jobs with police, fire, the county, et cetera, and then you're staying late tonight to to, to share what you do with your community. And we, we really do appreciate you being here for that. Um, so what I'm gonna ask of you all tonight um, is if we, um, let's see here, sorry, toggling back and forth here. Um, what I'm gonna ask you is to say who you are, uh, where you fit into the org chart. We hear a lot of you, you know, might work for FIRE. Um, tell us which organization you are and, and where you are uh, within that org, and then what role you play in that whole disaster management process of, um, you know, risk reduction, mitigation, preparedness, response, and recovery. Many of you touch many of those different aspects of that. Uh, our list tonight is rather long, so I'm going to ask the community if you have any just burning questions you 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 can't go without getting an answer to tonight. Uh, for these people, feel free to to unmute and ask. But if it's anything that we can push to to future meetings, um, I would ask that you do that because we do have a whole heck of a lot of people here. We want to be able to pass the mic to, uh, and still save time for the our main topic for tonight of insurance. 
So um, with that, I think I saw uh, Deputy Chief Mason, um, you or Terry, who's, uh, who do you want to start representing? So uh, I'll be standing in for Terry. Um, my name is Patrick Mason. I'm the Deputy Fire Marshal with Nevada County Consolidated Fire District. Uh, the way I fit into this whole thing is that I oversee the daily operational portion for the defensible space inspectors that work in the Office of Emergency Services. So I'm kind of the technical specialist um, for the day-to-day -day operations. Uh, they give me a call. I meet them out at different uh, addresses, different sites, and can answer those questions for the DSI inspectors on which direction to take an inspection or I answer a lot of phone calls coming back in from the general public about the defensible space inspections. Um, kind of go out ahead of time. Uh, we'll look at some properties prior to uh, giving them to the DSI inspectors to see if they fit within the realm of the hazardous vegetation ordinance. So uh, that's kind of what I do in a nutshell. Fantastic, we appreciate it. Um, chief Mathias, I believe is out tonight, but do we have battalion chief uh, Matt Wallen here tonight? Yes, I'm here. Um, I'm not sure if it's picking me up. Can you hear me okay? Loud and clear. Okay, great. Um, I primarily function as the as an operational battalion chief for mitigating the disaster at hand. Um, about when I first started, it was about a third of the year. Now it seems to be growing in length as our fire seasons get longer. Um, we used to be able to spend a lot more time on the prevention side and, and fuels management and so forth. And because of the short seasons, we've been uh, kind of flipping the other way around. Um, so, uh, but I'm also the guy, I, I think I've been labeled and I kind of laugh at it. It's the uh, gloom and doom battalion chief because I, I survived the campfire and know what it's like living two years after it and insurance and so forth. and. Um, I've spoken with uh, Wanda Mertens on some ideas I had for insurance. So I'm really curious to hear what you guys have to say tonight on some planning uh, or what some of the potential ideas are for mitigating this very big problem in California. Um, but uh, I basically function for the Nevada count as the Nevada County State Resource Battalion Chief. Um, I have nine or 10 different uh, local government and, and federal government fire departments in my first due. So I, I work from basically North San Juan down to Higgins, uh, out to Smartsville, not quite that far, but, and then over to uh, almost to Colfax. So I have a large area and um, been working with some private landowners this winter on helping them, <clears throat> excuse me, helping them get some uh, vegetation management programs started. Um, and we're finding it's, it's, a, it's a little bit slower than we'd like in some cases. And, uh, um, interestingly enough, there was a good article in the SAC B, uh, I think Saturday about a lot of the fuels management and treatment in California. There's very good intention, a lot of enthusiasm, but we're off to a kind of a slow start. So. Um, but we're all new to this and the magnitude of it. So, I mean, the best I can do is really ask for people's patience um, and know that the fire department has the public's best interests at heart. Um, we may seem a little reserved, I think, at times when we are working with private landowners with hired equipment for fuels management. Um, but again, we've seen the devastation worse and worsening every year. And so we are gonna take the road of being a little more cautious um, as best we can uh, in working with private landowners for that, for reduction. Uh, um, we're, we take it very seriously. We wanna do a good job and we don't wanna regret some decisions that could end up in disastrous consequence. So. Again, we're learning as we go as well. Um, this is new, some new ground for us, uncharted, especially with, uh, again, the magnitude and the sense of the magnitude of the problem and the sensitivity of the area combined with very short windows of burning. So um, that's 
kind of taking front center plate on, on my agenda this last month and into the spring. So um, anyway, uh, working with my uh, supervisors, uh, we're trying to do the best we can. So um, that's all I have. I'd be happy to answer questions as they are appropriate when that time comes. Fantastic. Well, thanks for your time. Thanks for being here and, and, and thanks for what you do, Matt. Um, we're going to kick it over to the law side. Um, Lieutenant Jacobs, I know we only got you for a few minutes here, so if we could put you in the spotlight. Uh, tell us a little bit about um, the at least the part of your day job that relates to our conversation tonight. Sure. Thank you. Hear me okay, Scott? Loud and clear. Wait, are you, do you have to leave to go hunting or play with your kids? What's going on there? I got to take my kid to baseball practice here pretty soon, so I'll, I'll be, I'll awesome. be brief. Uh, first, I, I appreciate the opportunity to be on tonight. I try to make as many of these coalition meetings as I can. This is a, a wonderful, phenomenal group of folks that are all about this. So I, I enjoy coming to these. Uh, congratulations, Scott. Uh, I, I've known Scott for a little while now through Sheriff Search and Rescue. Uh, he's a phenomenal guy. He's a great leader, and he's going to do well in this position. So, uh, but yeah, I'm uh, Lieutenant Jacobs. I work for the Sheriff's Office. Uh, I was assigned to the Office of Emergency Services about a year ago. Uh, I really have three main roles within the Office of Emergency Services. Uh, first and foremost, I become the Emergency Operations Center Director anytime we open the Emergency Operations Center. Uh, we would do that in times of disaster or large-scale emergencies, uh, such as the Jones Fire that we had last August. We were open for six days. Uh, so anytime that happens, uh, I become kind of the air traffic controller in there. Uh, I have a bunch of different section chiefs that work for me that are fabulous people. And really our role in the Emergency Operations Center is to support the incident command. So we support the law enforcement and fire managers that are working to suppress that fire and control it. Uh, the other bucket that I operate in is uh, I oversee on the administrative side of the house, the Defensible Space Inspector Program that Deputy Fire Marshal Pat Mason spoke about. Uh, he and I work together a lot, uh, just keeping that program going, refining it, building it. Uh, making sure we're dialing it in. Uh, currently, we have one full-time lead uh, inspector, and we just brought on our third temporary inspector. So we're happy to announce that we're full staffed, and we're looking forward to another another wonderful year. We've already got uh, several hundred inspections done in the last few months. Uh, so we're starting to see a lot of really good progress, a lot of good community involvement there. Uh, the third and final bucket is uh, more or less what I would call special projects. Uh, they're typically evacuation oriented. Uh, so I would say that that's kind of the preparedness side of, of what I do as opposed to the response side. Uh, some of the different projects that I've been involved in would be uh, like the evacuation tag program last summer that we launched, uh, continue to promote the high low sirens, uh, worked quite a bit on the Ready Nevada County dashboard, which we were able to launch uh, right before the Jones fire and it wound up becoming a, a pretty valuable community asset. I uh, worked uh, with the search and rescue evacuation team to get them some equipment and to kind of help build up their program there, which has been fabulous. Uh, we were able to get them a satellite communication system. And just recently, we were able to uh, get them some money from a pg and &E settlement that's going to go towards communications equipment, which ultimately benefits everybody because the more we can communicate and the better we can communicate, the safer everybody's going to be. So that's pretty much me in a nutshell. Oh, I, I guess I could say the, the latest project we're working on is uh, Zone Haven. Uh, we just uh, announced that last week after the Board of Supervisors meeting. It's a large scale countywide project that involves every law enforcement and fire agency in the county, as well as our state partners like Cal Fire, uh, the US Forest Service, uh, BLM, state parks. Uh, it's got a lot of players, a lot of moving parts and pieces, but we think it's gonna be a really valuable tool for both the fire and law management side, as well as the public. So pretty excited about that. And we're hoping to roll that out to the public in a couple of months. So, thanks, Scott. Yeah, fantastic. Thanks, Lieutenant Jacobs. I, I'm super excited, and I think many people already hear more about the zone planning. I know my firsthand experience in the campfire was that that was a, a very useful tool, and they didn't have half of the software that, that you're bringing to the table and the knowledge to go with it. So thanks for your time, and enjoy your evening. All right. Thanks. So, while we're talking about uh, his team, if we could kick this over maybe to the rest of his team, I don't know, Jen or Paul, would you like to go go next and talk about how you work uh, both with Lieutenant Jacobs and your other roles? Yeah, thanks, Scott. I'll kick it off and I'll turn it over to Jen Tamo. For those of you I haven't met, my name is Paul Cummings. I'm the County Office of Emergency Services Program Manager. 
So if you're not sure what OES does, if you haven't heard of us, we really try to prepare the community for all hazards, but with a focus on wildfire because that is our greatest threat. So and a lot of these things are complementary, whether it's preparing the community for an evacuation from a flood or a dam breaking or a wildfire. I personally oversee uh, the entire office, and so I do work closely with Lieutenant Jacobs and Deputy Fire Marshal Mason. They both do a great job on the programs they manage, and then also with Jen Tamo. I focus on federal grants. So we do have some, uh, some grants like with Homeland Security that provide uh, funding to support public health, law enforcement, and fire. Uh, also, I'm, I'm very involved in the planning. So we do have many plans that we can talk about offline or a different meeting that uh, we try to prepare for uh, specific events. Uh, I manage the alert and warning system. So that's gonna be code red, the code red training, uh, the actual you know, sending of the messages, working with law enforcement on that. Uh, as Lieutenant Jacob said, EOC. So I am a member of the EOC team. I'm usually in there with him shoulder to shoulder during an event. You know, he and I were sitting shoulder to shoulder sending code red messages during the Jones fire. Uh, so uh, part of that. And then public safety power shut off. So I try to take the lead on that, uh, liaising with PG&E to lessen the impact on, on our residents in, in Nevada County. And then I'll turn it over to Jen Tamo and she'll tell you what, what her focus areas are. Good evening. Hey, Jen, if so you could hold off. Oh. Hey, Jen, sorry to cut you off. I think we had a couple of questions. So Bob Snyder and Michael Malden, um, do you guys have something? Yes, uh, thank you. My name is Bob Snyder. I'm actually a resident of uh, the Greater Auburn Fire Safe Council, but I attend your meetings and think they're very, very valuable. This last week, we had a community meeting and we had a speaker from the Paradise Fire, a survivor of the Paradise Fire. And this is for the police and the EOS uh, side of the equation. Uh, she said that the even though um, Paradise had planned for a big fire and had further along than, than you could imagine, uh, the school was a complete bottleneck because parents tried to get to the school to pick up their kids. My question is, how is EOS factoring that in? I live in back of the high school and I can see a catastrophe for evacuation if parents are trying to get to their kids while we're trying yeah, to Yeah, Bob, evacuate. if I could. I don't mean to cut you off. We, 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 we have about three hours of info to pack in our 90 minute meeting. Um, we are having a whole meeting dedicated to evacuation. And I think we're going to, we'll, we'll address your question and others at that time, if that's okay. That's fine. Thank you very much. Well, yeah. We'll, so thanks we'll for bringing that up. We'll be notified when that meeting that. is. Uh, yep. We'll, uh, June or July, you're going to see it on the screen in a minute. Thank you. Perfect. So thanks for bringing that to our attention. Um, Michael, do you have something, something quick for us? No, that was a mistake. Sorry. Oh, all right. Well, thanks for waving. All right. Back to Jen. Well, thank you so much for the invite, Scott and the coalition. It's really great to be here. I'm looking forward to when we can all be together in person. I uh, hope it's not too far away. Um, I serve in the Office of Emergency Services as an admin analyst and a big part of the role that I, uh, a lot of the work that I do is through the public information. So I serve as an officer in the office <laughs> and um, I help with things like our Ready, Set, Go handbook. We mail this out every year. I work a lot on public safety um, messaging, preparedness messaging. Um, I work on social media and the website, as well as serve as a planning chief in the emergency operations center when we have events like public safety power shutoffs or wildfires or extreme heat events. Um, I also serve um, as, a, as a grant writer in the office, in addition to um, somebody else who couldn't make it here tonight, which is David Jones. And a lot of the work that we focus on is wildfire uh, mitigation. So we work on grants that are going to bring resources to the community like roadside vegetation, clearance, assistance for folks who might need help with defensible space because they're low income or have disabilities or just need extra help. Um, and then also we just, I, I work to serve as a resource for community members like the coalition, uh, Firewise communities, or folks who are just interested in learning more about how they can be prepared for emergencies. So I just wanna 
say hello if I haven't met you yet and just offer, um, I'll, I'll put my email and phone number in the chat. And if you have any resources that you'd like from our office, like our handbook um, or any information, please don't hesitate to reach out. Fantastic. Thanks, Jen. So fun fact, speaking of meeting live, last time Jen and I were in the same room together, we were asked to be expert panelists on the topic of survival and not just any survival, but survival during a global pandemic that shut down the world economy, uh, split uh, the communities into rival uh, factions. That, of course, being a work of fiction uh, called Station Eleven, and we were hosted by the library, not the actual government. So, uh, fun fact there. Who knew uh, how uh, on point their uh, reading book of the month was uh, January of 2020. So, all right, um, moving through our, our cast and crew here, um, if we could, um, since we spoke with law, is uh, Sergeant Cress on the call tonight? Sergeant Cress, are you out there? All right. Um, we will press on. Um, so rounding out uh, the Nevada County um, Rood Center crew, um, I believe we have Caleb Dardick, our projects administrator for the Nevada County Executive Office. Caleb, are you here tonight? Hi, Scott and everyone. Thank you so much. Hey, and uh, great to have this sort of spring kickoff as we get ready for another year. My name is Caleb Dardick, and I am a project administrator in the CEO's office, County of Nevada. And my job is to work on the Board of Supervisors priorities and help bring resources uh, to get them implemented. So one of them is wildfire preparedness, which we now call emergency preparedness. As uh, COVID has taught us, we have many emergencies to be prepared for, which we now know more than ever. And so I'm just very pleased to be working with the OES team on a needs assessment for this year as part of our really figuring out countywide an all hazards approach, where are the gaps, what can we, where, what do we need to prioritize and then to help find the resources to pay for them and to sort of bring, so that OES isn't sort of all alone, that brings sort of all the different aspects of the local government and our partners to the table and really just um, support the excellent work that Paul and Jen and Bob, uh, Lieutenant Jacobs and so many others on this call are doing. So just an extra pair of hands to this effort. Cool, thanks so much, Caleb. All right, um, and then for um, our immediate partner um, with the FireSafe Council of Nevada County. Um, I know we have Executive Director Jamie Jones here. Jamie, I think everyone knows you pretty well, but could you uh, give us a quick update on how you fit into this process and maybe what's in front of you these days? Sure. So for those who may not know me, I'm Executive Director Jamie Jones, FireSafe Council of Nevada County, and we you know, while we see a lot of law enforcement, fire personnel, county participation, we are really the nonprofit organization in the community that um, tries to leverage our, our stakeholder uh, partnerships and community engagement to really um, to come up with these collaborative resources for everybody in the community to have available to them. And so with that, um, our focus is on outreach and education. Uh, we do projects and we have many programs, which some of which I'll highlight later and I won't go into detail on those. Um, we participate uh, in, in a lot of grant writing to fund our own our programs and projects, but we also uh, have many partnerships in the county that have been a benefit to the community. So um, one here tonight that we see that's pretty prevalent for us is our, our partnership with the County of Nevada's Office of Emergency Services. Uh, we've been able to bring a lot of our programs to life uh, with that partnership. And then we also have partnerships with uh, US Forest Service, BLM, CAL FIRE, where we're working on um, projects around the community. So, um, you know, and, and, and with that OES, you know, part of our, our core um, 
program role here is as we are the firewise coordinator for all of Nevada County. So we're responsible for uh, building these firewise communities and helping them really achieve these, these grassroots community engagement um, in their own neighborhoods. So, uh, and we offer our DSAV program and trainings as part of that as well. Uh, I think that about covers our broad scope of, of that. Um, and, I, and I know I'll expand more on that later on for everybody. Fantastic, thanks, Jamie. Um, I know sometimes we, uh, you, you get support in these meetings from Don Fain, the president of your board. Don, are you here today? Do you wanna say hello? Yeah, I'm here. Um, basically, uh, I'm the chairman of the board. We've got 11 member, member board. Um, we also have some associate members um, that are also connected with our board. And then we have agency partners and community leaders that also work with us. So um, I do help teach some of the uh, defensible space advisory classes. I do advisory visits periodically. Um, I do work with Jamie on a at least weekly, if not sometimes daily basis with, with these grants that she's working on. So I'm kind of behind the scenes with, with Jamie heading the, heading the charge. So that's it for me. Fantastic. Well, thanks, uh, for, thanks for what you do in your, the, the time you volunteer there. Scott, we do have one other uh, member of the Fire Safe Council on tonight. I'm not sure if if uh, you were aware, but so Pat Leach is on tonight and I wanna just announce her. She is our new FireWise coordinator. Um, and, and that comes just as of today, we were able to, to finalize that relationship. So she's gonna be your guys' partnership, uh, your, your FireWise liaison from the Fire Safe Council. So, um, you know, she has a lot of experience doing this sort of community work uh, in the FireWise communities up on the North San Juan Ridge. I know she's really excited about bringing this to the rest of the, the county. Um, and so, as I said, today is really her first day. So uh, she need a little bit of time to, to get focused on the other parts of the county and, and get up to speed. But I think that she's gonna be a really great addition to this team uh, and a great resource for everybody here on this, this meeting. That's fantastic news. And we appreciate you sharing that. So we, we look forward to that working relationship. All right, and then on to uh, our group here. So Nevada County Coalition of Firewise Communities. I believe you know the cast and crew here, but again, just wanna say thanks to, to all of them and, and let them uh, introduce themselves. Um, perhaps the, the one name that um, you, you haven't seen a lot yet, but Kristen Cook, member of the steering committee. You with us here? I am, can you hear me? Loud and clear. Awesome. Hi everyone, I'm Kristen Cook. I head up the UBET Firewise community um, and I participate on the coalition steering committee. I think, uh, I think the, the rationale for my presence on the steering committee is to sort of represent more rural um, and unusual Firewise communities that we have versus some of the more sort of home association oriented ones. Um, I also am a defensible space advisor and attended the courses that Don and Jamie put on, and I appreciate that. Um, and I just look forward to uh, working together. Thanks, Scott. Fantastic. Well, super happy to have you on, on my team here. And then Jeff Peach, I uh, had you in the agenda as the IT guru. It appears the bylaws have come up with a more, um, we'll say, professional title to that. But uh, you want to say hi? Yeah, I sit around all day waiting for emails to come in from people from the coalition and the various Firewise communities, so it's fun. No, I have a lot of fun. We we really got this machine greased up and rolling, so it's it's a lot of fun working with everybody. But I basically do tech support, really, is my thing. Stay in the background. Yeah, and, and we appreciate it. Jeff fields an incredible amount of correspondence uh from from the group so we we, we appreciate that um bob garza uh heading up our recertification working group um could you say hi bob yeah are you out there bob well i just want to thank bob i don't know if he's gonna 
be with us tonight, but Bob actually organizes a whole lot of the, the lineup and our agendas and our speakers. So he does, much like Jeff, does a ton of work behind the scenes. And I'm really thankful to have um, Bob Garza um, on, uh, on the team. Um, the evacuation working group is led by Bob Long and Chris Riley. Bob, I think everyone on this call might recognize you. Uh, what about Chris Riley? Is Chris Riley around? Wanna mm -hmm. say hello and introduce that working group? I don't see Chris in the meeting here tonight, Scott. Got it. But Bob? Chris Riley has been a speaker before and uh, might, might well be known for the show and tell of what to carry in your car when you're evacuating your house. I'm going to keep going. Fantastic. All right. Wanda, if we get you to mute your line. Um, and then uh, Susan, real estate working group. Uh, not much happening in the real estate working group right now, but uh, I will be looking at, at whatever the new law was that was brought to our attention about uh, disclosure and stuff around the sale of a house. So that's kind of next on my agenda. I also do stuff in the background. I, I help with the website and I do a lot of the writing and the documentation for the coalition. Fantastic. All right. Um, and then Virginia Gompert, we're going to give you the floor in a bit here, but you want to take a quick minute and speak to your role as secretary in insurance working group? Sure. So as a secretary, I just help uh, pull together the monthly meetings um, as far as where we're going to meet, how we're going to meet, and then make sure that that's scheduled. And then I'm a defensible space advisor trained by Don Thane. And um, also I'm in charge of the insurance working group. And so we were putting on tonight's presentation and um, then we also have a couple of people that have um, asked to be on the insurance working group. And I actually will be reaching out to you next week. Um, I just needed a priority was to get this meeting done first. So um, that's it for now. Fantastic. All right. Um, so let's jump into our current uh, education spotlight. So this is our, our tentative 2021 schedule. Just so you know, this came directly from your feedback. So I, I am blown away with the participation we had in the survey that was sent out. So thank you all who took the time to go through there, not just checking boxes, but also including some, some qualitative feedback. We, we really appreciate that. So um, this is more or less the exact order of your interest as a community, tweaked only because we wanted to have a few things um, um, moved up in the calendar year relative to fire season. So uh, insurance was hands down your, your number one topic uh, of interest. So we're leading with that tonight. We did move up uh, fuels reduction, clearing rules, and more from Susan and the real estate working group to next month, simply because in April, we still have time. We still have time to run saw, turn the chippers on, get some masticating done and anything that needs to happen. Um, whereas um, evacuation, we, we, we hope can be safely pushed back um, to uh, July um, and that we won't be deep in fire season as of yet. And then just the chronological um, aspect of May, we'll be discussing early warning systems. So obviously we'll talk about the county dashboard, we'll talk about code red, but also some creative solutions you can do right on your own block working with your neighbors, using handheld radios, um, you know, uh, phone trees, things like that to take care of each other. Um, we'll talk about situational awareness and what to do when it's summertime and perhaps we have a red flag weekend ahead of us. And then in July, we will um, be leaning back on the Emergency Ops Center, um, as well as some others to talk about evacuation safety. So that's tentative schedule for the, the, the first half of our, our working year for this group. Um, just to kind of level set um, some expectations for, um, for those events, I wanna hit on our mission. And the mission is that the coalition promotes fire safety through advocacy, education, 
and community involvement with other stakeholders interested in working towards stronger fire safety practices. Um, it's pretty simple. It's not the 2000 word Marriott mission statement. Um, this is pretty straightforward in that we will be focusing on advocacy, education, and involvement. Um, you'll see that reflected in those topics and know that the coalition is, uh, you know, in, in the most simple terms I have, they've got your back. But at the same time, it's worth spending a couple minutes to talk about what we don't do in our scope of practice. So there were a number of suggestions that I would love to execute on that came through in those surveys. But while we do, um, you know, work through advocacy, we are not a lobbying organization. So man forcing, you know, Commissioner Lara to change laws is probably a bit beyond what we have the education and budget for. For education, we will talk about factors for fire, and we're going to lean on some of the amazing people that introduced themselves earlier, um, you know, in, in this call and talk to you about topics of how to, you know, further build education around topics. Um, what we will not be doing is primary research. So we're, we're a few PhDs short of things like beginning forming a working group to, um, you know, say, um, investigate climate change was one of the perspectives. We're, we're a few PhDs and uh, uh, a few hundred thousand dollars short on, on that topic. Um, and then community involvement and, and advocacy. Similarly, like we will definitely work through individuals like the, uh, Caleb and the, and the Board of Supervisors um, who have a little bit more leverage and we can speak on your behalf. What we won't be able to do is bang our fists and demand that AT&T delivers landlines to every single person on in this meeting and in the rest of the county. So just know that we, we, we are here to support the, the communities um, working towards those stronger fire safe practices, but there is a limit to, to what we can do given our working budget of exactly zero dollars uh, and zero paid staff. So um, we appreciate your understanding in that, and we are really looking forward to some of these education spotlights ahead starting tonight um, with homeowners insurance, again, the, the, the number one topic based on, on your votes. So with that, I'm gonna hand that over to your moderator. Um, Virginia, floor is yours. Okay, thanks. Um, so uh, like uh, Scott had said, is one of the biggest issues is insurance and it's getting it and keeping it. And uh, when I was talking to uh, Wanda Mertens with, uh, she's with Farmers Insurance, but she's got a great uh, perspective from the state level of what's going on. She's got some bad news, she's got some good news and she wants to share that with you tonight. And then Jeff Thorsby is with us. He's a senior analyst with the Board of Supervisors, and um, he is going to be talking about access accessibility and affordability from the county's perspective in helping out um, homeowners. And then uh, Jamie Jones with the Fire Safe Council will be talking about um, a neighborhood perspective and the local community perspective. And then Kristen will be coming on. Um, she's part of our steering committee for the Fire Safe Council. And she'll be talking about hardening homes and what you can do specifically now um, that the rains you know, are slowing down and we can um, harden our homes and create defensible space. So with that, uh, Wanda, I'm gonna hand the floor over to you and, and um, you, you can go. Okay, well, thank you for asking me to be a part of this tonight. Um, I have had the opportunity to follow the Firewise communities for a while, and I've had the opportunity to visit with some of the Firewise board members at a national level. So what you're doing is priceless, and I want you to know that, and everyone listening tonight, um, you are demonstrating a grassroots ability and confidence and structure that from an insurance uh, industry's perspective will be acknowledged. I can't tell you when, I just know that it's being looked at. Um, there were three different things I thought I would address regarding insurance to address specific questions. Uh, the first one was, is there going to be more options than what we've had in the past? And I would tell you this year, 
I know of three or four carriers that have come in here that have unique names for themselves. Um, they come from structures that have good reserves that have not suffered a lot of losses. And as a result, they're able to take on more risk. So as folks are looking for insurance, uh, you're going to find some places are going to have just still the California Fair Plan with a companion policy. And you're going to hear of some of these new companies. Um, I've done my research on the ones that I've been aware of and been brought to the table with. Um, I guess I refer to them as baby structures in a sense. So I'm very um, interested in watching them as they go through the fire seasons here in California. I think the biggest part of the fire seasons here in California is the fact that two years ago we were at a 70% tree mortality and the last report I heard when I was on a meeting with the California Fair Plan with their speakers was that we'd reached an 80% tree mortality. So water is important to have but we still have the fuel not only the trees, but the fact we've built into the forest. Um, the new carriers are good, there's no question. So I think the consumer is having to make adjustments out of their comfort zone, where we used to be able to get our insurance and it was the insurance and it was gonna cover everything. Now it really is more about asking an awful lot of questions. Um, I tell people, what are your questions and what you don't ask? I'd like to fill in the blanks. Um, the California Fair Plan itself is progressing. It has extended replacement now. Each line on the Fair Plan can be evaluated and adjusted. So if you are on that policy, it's really important to talk to whoever you're working with on that. Have them explain each line. You may find you have coverages that you honestly don't need. Uh, depending on your goals of whether you rebuild or you take your funds and buy another house. I think the next thing I'd like to share is what the consumer usually doesn't understand or even be, be given information about is the insurance industry um, has a product that they themselves have to buy, which is called reinsurance. It's a global product. It's like... Uh, any other insurance, if you have a catastrophic loss, it steps in and funds those losses. Um, with the last Zoom meeting I did with Fairplan, there was a speaker uh, from the state level who came in and, ex and showed how the insurance industry had done really well up until 2018. They were still maintaining a balance as far as cash flow. And it wasn't until 18 and 19 that they started going in the wrong direction by billion millions of dollars here in California, but nationwide. So to share with the public today, I would tell you that right now, um, the industry is evaluating losses in 2020, and they're looking to see, to see how those ratios are impacting their ability to write new business. So the new companies that are coming in do not have those loss ratios, which makes it very attractive for them. That's a plus. Um, the, the loss ratios impact the insurance company's abilities to buy reinsurance. It was an 18 month process. Uh, in the past, the um, reinsurance was given on a three-year contract. Um, I tried to confirm that it was a three-year contract this time around, but I'm getting feedback that that's not the case. And so, the major carriers, which um, is AAA, Lloyds of London, Farmers Insurance, were the three carriers in the foothills that didn't really step out of the foothills as quickly as some of the other ones. So their reinsurance is calculated at a higher rate than those who did not have as much loss ratios. Um, just information so you can understand how the industry is having to do a balancing act too. None of the industry wants to leave California. Everybody loves California. Um, they know it's a great place to be. So it is a constant ebb and flow of information that's going back and forth. Um, understanding that the insurance industry as a whole has their own insurance, I think helps the consumer to understand this 
very um, uncomfortable time that we're in right now where predictability is not there at all. It really is subject to change every, I'd say six to eight months, I see things changing as statistics come in as to what the cost factors are. Um, I, the, the other aspect of insurance that I think ourselves as consumers are unaware of is um, how we control premium amount. Um, there's a lot of different ways of looking at it. Currently, most, if you've never had a loss, most consumers are unaware of the fact that if you have a deductible on your homeowner's policy, that is not money that you have to write a check for or to give to the insurance company before they settle your claim. This is what is deducted off the last check that is issued from the insurance companies. And I have found that when clients understand they have more control of when that money comes out of their pocket, they can use that as a tool on their policies to help control premium. Not always a lot, but it is an option that the consumer can look at. It's just that they may have a lack of experience or education that this is a tool that helps. I think the other thing on insurance policies is people have a perception on the personal property side. And the personal property side is really about what can be replaced. So you have a 1879 China closet. It's irreplaceable. You will get a China closet back. It just won't be from 1879. And I think when you look at the fact that if you didn't go home tomorrow, how much of the things that you have actually are replaceable? And are they kept because they have an emotional attachment, which I have with certain things? But if it was gone, would I be concerned about replacing that? So personal property in a policy is also something, especially with the California Fair Plan, something to consider to control costs. Um, I feel that there's a lack of knowledge on the California Fair Plan. Uh, the Department of Insurance is phenomenal. We've been invited again to participate in a massive get together and Zoom meeting similar to this with the Department of Insurance to give feedback from a local level of what the consumers are saying and needing. So at the end of this month, however that meeting turns out, I'll be happy to share any information that I obtain from that. Uh, the Department of Insurance and our commissioner did issue that bulletin the 1st of November stopping all non-renewals for any homes that were in an area that were infected, affected by fires last year. Um, sorry for the Jones fire. That was a horrific event, but it was a blessing to a lot of people that were, I call kind of on the hit list. The companies were saying, we need to pull out. We don't have enough reserve to handle this. So we had a 12 month moratorium on non-renewals. If anyone has received a non-renewal, it may have something to do with your location. Um, and there may be carriers that are using different verbiage. So please challenge it and ask for a good definition for that non-renewal. Don't just accept it. Um, otherwise, with the Firewise communities, I, I'm a very big advocate for it, obviously. Um, I find that when we are speaking to company people at our company level, and then when we're speaking at, with people at the state level, there's always a need for how does the consumer respond and what is the consumer doing? You know, how do we fix it? Um, and I think the Firewise communities with their growth and with the potential and the participation, I will tell you that the visual satellite imagery of properties that are being worked. We have what's known as a fire line score, which it used to be protection class through the fire departments, which was response time. Now we have what's called fire line, which is access, clearance, water source, fuel source, and topography. Then they put the wind map over it. And it's now all about probability of loss. And I would tell you that the renewals that I've experienced in the past 90 days, a lot of those fire lines that were really bad and farmers did keep, um, their fire lines improved. And these are areas that have been specifically identified, as I see the visuals, 
um, with areas that people are so proactive and they're really getting their clearance down. So um, I see the Firewise community becoming stronger and perhaps its own entity to represent the consumer, um, not only on the governmental side, but the insurance side. Um, do you have questions or is, is there something else you'd like me to mention or share? Wanda, I'm, I've been tasked with uh, monitoring the chat and we have a question from Scott Allen. What are the names of three insurance companies that are coming into California? If if uh, if 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 we heard you correctly on that. <laughs> okay, it wouldn't necessarily be they're coming in. It could be they've been here for a while because even for me to do the research on it, um, the first one that um, is called Lemonade. It's a policy that's being written. Um, How do you and, spell and that? It's Lemonade, L-E-M-O-N-A-D-E. That's literally the name of the company. Um, we've got another one called Homesite. Uh, I took, uh, I go online a lot and I take different properties and I go online to see who's quoting and who's writing. And then I find out if who the contact person is so that I can call and say, okay, this is our protection class and this is our fire line. Are you telling me you can write? Um, Homesite was a company through um, Geico, Geico or Progressive, I think I went on and said, give me the top 10 companies. Doesn't always mean that they're going to do it, um, but they are quoting it and they're saying they will write it. Um, I have another client who's down off of Wolf and 49, who a year ago, nobody would, would touch this particular property that's there. And they found a broker that was running a product through Zurich. So I still feel uh, flatland locations are having more of a selection than just a blanket. We're not riding in that area. I think up here in the foothills, we're still having more challenges. Thank you. And we have a question from Maggie. Who are the new carriers? I think maybe you just answered that. Yeah, Lemonade and, and you know, State Farm is a fabulous company. And for the longest time, they were unable due to their loss ratios. And then I want to say probably three years it's been probably that they've been able to come in. But I see a lot of folks being able to work with them and um, in areas that other carriers a year ago would not touch. And so State Farm, but Remember the names that I give you are names of companies that you can't necessarily just go online and find. You have to go through a company that's a brokerage house. And, um, and um, once again, I, I, I guess I better correct myself on that because I went online and said, me, give me the top offers of insurance in California and up came this place called Homesite. So it's a lot of homework for the consumer today compared to what we're used to doing. And uh, uh, Shaney McLaughlin posted a link to an article on Commissioner Laura's site. It's had, the headline is Laura and Newsom's administration working on establishing home and community hardening standards for insurance. That came out right. in February. Do you have any remarks about that? Well, understanding what it means with the hardening aspect of it is, is I, I think this is a twofold statement. It sounds really good, but what it's saying is if a home complies with the hardening guidelines and that those are consistent, the goal is to have a consistency with those hardening guidelines and that then the insurance industry, if a consumer is you know, completely compliant, then that they should not be non-renewed or they should be more uh, writable, so to speak. Um, I, I, you know, I don't know how many are listening that have been up here for 30 plus years or more, but I remember going out off a rattlesnake 30 years ago when homes were being built and the clearance was phenomenal around the homes that were being built. Now, when I go out to do reinspections, those little saplings that used to be are now trees. And so as the FireWise communities are taking this initiative and the Fire Safe Council has supplies and services to render, we're actually making the forest a more livable environment, but also a more survivable environment. Great, thank you. And uh, uh, 
Virginia, I'm going to toss this back to you to in, uh, introduce our next speaker. Thank you very much, Wanda. Thank you for having me. Okay. Could I ask a question here? Sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. I wanted, this is amazing information. You're so knowledgeable in this. Do you guys think you could set up, I don't know, I haven't looked at your web page, but set up something for insurance that, you know, all this information, you espoused it verbally, but I can't take notes fast enough. Because this was the primary topic, I think it might be good. You know, basically, what we're all looking to is not to have our insurance cancel and get the lowest premium possible. I think that's the bottom line for everybody. Tom, the coalition already does have an insurance page on its website. I don't know if it has all of these most current things on it from Wanda in terms of names of companies. And frankly, we can't keep up with that because the specific names of companies change frequently, but we have mm -hmm. information on there that I think is the sort of thing that you're talking about. Okay, well, maybe I can help out by keeping it current. Okay, we can talk to you about that. Thank you. And so okay. Virginia, we can yeah. move on then. Thank you. Sure. And what we can do too is uh, recap uh, each of the speakers and then send that to them. Just make sure we got it right. I'll do it. And then um, put that post that on the website once it's uh, once it's finished. So thanks, Tom, for the suggestion. So our next speaker is uh, Jeff Thorsby. He's with he's a senior analyst for Nevada County Board of Supervisors, and he's going to give a um, a uh, county perspective on insurance accessibility and affordability. Uh, good evening, everyone. Yeah, uh, thank you so much, Virginia. And, and um, I just want to say it is it really is an honor to uh, to be here and speak with you. I recognize some of the folks uh, on this call and I've uh, worked in some capacities for a while. Um, but really, I think the coordination and the conversations and the work that you're doing are critical. I mean, 100%. I mean, so I just want to say that and it's a real honor to be here. And so thank you for that. But yeah, so let me give a little just quick introduction. So I, yeah, just as Virginia said, uh, I'm uh, the senior management analyst for the Nevada County Board of Supervisors office. Um, and so you're probably like, what does that mean? Um, and uh, I like to think of myself as I, I'm an information detective. I work directly for our board of supervisors uh, on different um, things that they're specifically working on. I also work closely with the county executive officer. Um, I'm also a public information officer and I work in a number of different capacities. Um, but um, I also just want to give a shout out to Wanda. Thank you so much for your presentation. Um, about, I want to say maybe two or three years ago, just when I started really launching into learning more about this issue, uh, I actually had an opportunity of uh, hearing her speak. And so that kind of, she uh, is a wonderful speaker. So thank you for that. Um, I, I'm a little uh, nervous uh, coming after her. So thank you so much, Wanda. Um, but real quick, so one of the issues that kind of got me involved um, is really working for two of our supervisors. Uh, clearly every one of your supervisors, um, every all five of them in Nevada County, this is a high priority and a, a major concern uh, as we're seeing major uh, loss of insurance, uh, the affordability and the availability of insurance is um, uh, a critical problem that's happening in Nevada, in Nevada County. I have a quick presentation. I'm going to try to keep it somewhat high level because um, I think uh, the more you go down uh, in trying to understanding this issue, the more complicated it gets and the, and the devil really is in the details, unfortunately. Um, but there are some fundamental principles that I'm going to talk about tonight. But uh, just real quick, uh, Supervisor Ed Schofield for District 2, as well as uh, Supervisor Dan Miller, for District 3, and actually, honestly, everyone too, including District 1, Supervisor Heidi Hall, and District 4, Supervisor Susan Hook, uh, really is prominent. But I've really worked closely with um, Ed, um, Supervisor um, Schofield, and Supervisor Miller in two different capacities and really looking through this. And I'll talk a little bit about that. I'm going to go and share uh, my screen uh, on a presentation they put together. Again, this is really in the, okay, Okay, real quick, slideshow. Let me know if you guys can see that, okay? Yes. Yeah, I think so. Everyone can see that? Okay, um, awesome. Okay, well, first of all, 
I think it's important in, in, from the county's perspective, again, this is from our perspective, they think, um, you know, we, we, try, we hear from constituents almost daily on this issue, um, uh, some more days than others. But, um, and, and when we think we hear about the availability, I've lost my insurance, the affordability, I can't afford it. You know, I, mean, I can't tell you some of the premiums I've heard. Um, you know, uh, and, and that folks are forced to pay. So let's talk a little bit about that. Um, and I think what I'm gonna to try to cover today, uh, and some of this you already know, but I think it's important to kind of touch base on this. And this is coming from when I, when I really had to digest a lot of these details and I'm not gonna go through everything, but if you could see, I did literally just have papers spread around me so I can try to identify numbers if we have a lot of questions. But why is this happening? Who's involved here? Um, what has the county done? Um, how can we solve this problem, right? That's probably the most important here. Uh, and then uh, maybe me, what can you do today? Now, uh, of course, I think one is really talking from a consumer's perspective. And I think probably most predominant for most people on this call is just thinking about what about my insurance, right? How do I deal with that? The county's perspective, we're to, we, we look a little bit for more from the aggregate perspective. So, um, um, but, um, so let's go ahead and start off. And this may, one of this may look familiar actually when you mentioned uh, you heard a presentation from uh, the California uh, uh, Fair Plan. Uh, and this is important. And, and actually, I have this spreadsheet. This slide is literally from I was able to meet with the uh, executive director for the California Fair Plan with Supervisor Miller, uh, with a group of different supervisors. We flew down to LA and met with her. And she gave this to us and we said, can we use this? And she said, absolutely. So I wanted to show this, and this, is, this actually is out of date at this point, because it's only showing 2018, it's not showing 19. But this is an important component because first of all, why is this happening? And, um, and obviously we know why, it's because of wildfire, right? Uh, but uh, historically insurance companies looked at, wild, looked at fire when they're looking at homeowners insurance, looked at it as an attritional risk, meaning, you know, your toaster caught on fire and the fire and the house burned down. Uh, but then really when we started seeing 2017, just as Wanda said, we started seeing catastrophic losses. We started seeing entire towns being destroyed, right? The campfire, I mean, hey, significant. Jeff, you, need to, yeah. you need to advance your slides, please. We're still on the first uh, slide. Boom, thank you. There you go, what is thank you. Going on, give me one sec. Um, thank you for that. I appreciate that. Um, let's see. So real quick. Um, sorry, I apologize. Thank you for telling me that. Let's see. Is that advanced for you or not? No. It's still on the first. You had it before. Why is this happening? You you had the third uh, slide up. Oh, I did. Ha I did have it. Okay. I'm sorry, guys. I should know this. I work for the county. We usually are pretty good at this. I apologize. Is that, are you seeing the second slide there? No. The first one. Yep, I think you need to put it into slideshow mode. Uh, and there you go. Okay, I'm just gonna leave it like this and just make it larger. Okay, I apologize guys. Um, and that's the challenge here. I'm just gonna make it higher. Can you see that? Is that yeah. better? Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry guys. Um, for all you other county folks on here, please don't tell anybody. Um, but, okay, so real quick, so why is this happening? So here, can you guys see that now? Yes. Okay, so let me go back here. So, so if you really look at, uh, and this is an important slide because what it does is it really shows like the dramatic losses that these insurance companies are having. And this is important, so bear with me because I know um, the, um, probably the ability to tolerate and think about uh, the, the, the challenge that insurance companies have, uh, is, it's hard for us to swallow, but it's important because it helps us start thinking about how we can try to solve some of these problems. Um, but number one, so if you look at this, right, the average annual profit was 390 million over, uh, you know, almost like 20 years, right? Um, and then community, community, uh, pardon me, cumulative profits were 1.2 billion, right? 2017, 2018 was catastrophic. So this is California wide. We saw losses of over $20 billion. Um, 
these, these companies couldn't handle it. Essentially, insurance companies recognized, uh, for example, after the campfire, there was Merced, uh, Merced Insurance Company, um, and they became insolvent. And so when they became insolvent, bankrupt, they could not pay their policies. Um, and I'm going to talk about there's a little bit of state backup coverage, which has increased. Um, but essentially, that's kind of what's happening here. We're seeing catastrophic losses um, across the state. And insurance companies are like, we can't, uh, we can't tolerate this risk or we'll become insolvent. I mean, bottom line, right? And then there's additional challenges. Uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that, which really gets to who's involved here. So obviously, we have insurance companies. But it's important to note that there's different types of insurance carriers. And this is something that I, I, I feel like most people don't fully understand, which is important, particularly when you start working in the Department of Insurance, when you're working with your brokers, these are important factors to understand. Uh, and, and I will just say, uh, I'm not an expert by any means, um, but this is just some of the things that we've really learned in our office, um, that we'll, the conversations we're having with some folks at the state level. But number one, you have your admitted insurance carriers. So the easy way, and I'm not going to give the technical answer, the technical definitions for all these things, but the, that's the best way to think of your admitted insurance carriers. Those are your folks who are really working underneath uh, specific regulations to provide insurance in the California market underneath the Department of Insurance and underneath certain state, state regulations. Your non-admitted insurance carriers, those are pl folks like Lloyds of London who are not going through that same regulatory system. And so, um, well, generally they can take on more risk, um, but they, there is less regulation, less control on what premium increases they can do. So that's important to know is what does the Department of Insurance do? The Department of Insurance does is what they work is through our admitted insurance carriers, amongst some other things, but they basically say, okay, listen, you can increase your insurance rate, insurance carrier, by only up to six point, up basically 7%. If you're going to increase beyond 7% within a single year, you're going to have to come and get approval by the, uh, the Department of Insurance. And you have to prove that that's actually sound and there's a justification for that purpose. Uh, and the reason being is the Department of Insurance is really... Uh, primary purpose is consumer protection. They're trying to protect consumers from in, like hike increases, right? That are uncontrollable, right? So that's what they do. Uh, and, and, but that is also very difficult for, there's also um, challenges for, there's, there, it's, a, it's, it's a lengthy process. Um, and so that's important. Uh, Wanda also talked about reinsurance. That's an important component. That's basically, you know, the insurance for insurance companies, right? Um, and one thing that's really important to note is that um, in, in, um, is that California does not permit property insurance insurancers to pass along the net cost of reinsurance through their rates. Therefore, it does not cannot deduct reinsurance losses from the values of claim paid by the calculating rates. That's a lot of like long words, uh, but basically what that means is there is a challenge for California admitted insurance carriers because they can't necessarily carry on the losses that they receive from, in, from their reinsurance that they see through reinsurance to their rate payers, meaning us, right? So that creates a challenge. And so, so, they, uh, so that means that they, when they go through and they want to try to increase their rates, they're trying to cover for more additional costs. I'm not going to, I'm just going to kind of move forward because it gets even more complicated, and very complicated. But that being said, really what we have is we, if we think back in the context, we have an insurance uh, industry, right? In California, which is a good industry, but now looking at catastrophic losses, the insurance carriers are like, whoa, we got to pull back. And then additionally, also have an additional constraint on how on, there is a process to uh, increase rates, which is important. I, we're, there's no doubt. In fact, from our, the county's perspective, that's important. That's critical. And we want costs lower, honestly. But that's important to know from the insurance side of things of how, what they're looking at and why they're just pulling out. Um, uh, and so that being said, obviously I've talked a little bit about the, the California Insurance Commissioner. 
Uh, that's the uh, elected uh, you know, insurance commissioner official, Ricardo Lara, the Department of Insurance, which his insurance companies oversee, probably his regulatory agency oversees. Um, and it's important to note that the Department of Insurance is a great tool because not only can they help point you to resources, which is brokers, as well as you can always contact insurance carriers directly, but obviously brokers are gonna be your experts. But also if you receive a non-renewal claim or if you are concerned about uh, your insurance uh, carrier, the policy that they're presenting or that they're not following through, there's a whole team of people who can review and work with you on that. So that's an important resource that I think, um, but of course, as any state bureaucracy and agency, we get a little concerned because it's a, it's a bureaucratic process. Okay, so then moving forward, then we have our homeowners insurance, that's us, right? Uh, and I'm one of you, I own a home right here in Nevada City. Um, one of the things to note is that when we really looked at Nevada County, we saw that uh, if you look at tier two and tier three of like Cal Fire's map, essentially, um, if you look at which is uh, uh, um, basically uh, high, uh, and I, I'm not using technical terms, but high rate risk of fire and then extreme risk, right? That's tier three. Uh, that's basically 70%, 76%, pardon me, of all county improved parcels. And just for those folks on the call, an improved parcel from the county's perspective is basically a parcel with a building on it that we know about. Um, of course, there's some that we don't know about and that's a whole nother you know, conversation. But that means 76% basically of improved parcels in Nevada County are in the WUI, the wildland urban interface area, high fire danger area. That means the majority of us are looking at definitely increased costs or losing our insurance entirely. Um, that's it. And so we already know that, but that's important to know from this perspective of Nevada County. Then we have the California plan, the California Fair Plan Association, which a lot of us are on. I uh, want to talk about that too. Uh, and we, a lot of us have what we refer to as a difference of conditions policy. That's when we take two different policies and match them with the California Fair Plan, which is limited. Uh, and then uh, we can have, quote, complete coverage. I think it's important to note that um, with any of these plans, especially the California Fair Plan, it's, you may be insured, but you need to be really thinking about, are you properly insured? Are you underinsured? Meaning if a fire should happen today, would it actually get repay all your costs? And then additionally, one of the complications that we see with these uh, catastrophic losses, right? Is you have to think that, uh, for example, when we see uh, in 2017, Nevada County experienced a, a fire, right? We, the Wind Complex fire. That was the same year um, as a lot of other fires, including the Camp Fire. Well, right after that, during the recovery phase, you have a huge increase of demand for construction, which also means a huge demand of, um, the need for materials to build those, which means, right, that the prices go up, right? Supply and demand, it goes up, which means that all these, these the folks who, who, who maybe are, are, were insured, well now they're now living, their insurance plan is now actually underinsured because it can only get them so much in this new heightened market. So that's important to think through. Um, so I, I'm gonna keep moving on and I'll switch my slide here. So, um, so that's who's at the table. And again, this is really high level, but so what has the county done? And I think this is an important question that a lot of folks want to know. Um, and what is the county's role? The county, in all honesty, we have a very limited role in this. We're talking about um, really a private market, which is, uh, and actually real quick, before I go back that, I want to go back to the California Fair Plan Association real quick before I move on. Uh, and I'm going to try to keep Virginia, hey, feel Jeff, free to just, Jeff, yeah. Hey, Jeff, just real, real quickly, we have uh, a few more speakers and you got about a minute on the clock. So if there's anything you want to add about Nevada County's involvement, I, I would say press forward to that. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that, Scott. I wasn't, I wasn't sure where I was at. So I'm just going to move forward quickly. So one of the key components, we have done a lot. We have, uh, our role is limited. We've reached out and uh, we have, a, we've been corresponding a lot with the, the governor, uh, we've done uh, we've done testimony, a lot of letters and 
correspondence, additionally working with advocacy organizations, which is uh, the California State Associations of Counties, as well as the Rural County Representatives of California, uh, and really kind of digging in deep in trying to do advocacy on specific legislation. Uh, this is probably the most important slide, uh, and then I have one quick one, and I'll try to really speed it up. Uh, first of all, I, we, it's important to recognize this is a long-term problem. This is going to take a while. As long as wildfire here is, and as we're seeing it, which is you're working on, this is going to be a problem. And so we're working on legislation to help ease this. But um, ultimately, fire is the problem here, and we need to help address that. But there is increased transparency of risk modeling, and that's some key aspects which is we need all these different uh, uh, insurance carriers are looking at uh, how they're evaluating risk. It's not standardized. And, uh, and so we uh, have called on uh, the, uh, the insurance commissioner to really say, hey, we need individual level, right? That's your home hardening. That's your vegetation management, your property, but also local certification programs, right? Um, and then also neighborhood mitigation programs. What is your fire wire community doing? And then also regional wildfire mitigation actions, you know, like we saw um, with the fire break project uh, and the McCourtney wildfire break. Um, also, um, and then there's been a couple of things uh, that have already happened, but then also looking at other models, including flood, flood insurance over on the East Coast and, and also looking at the earthquake authority. Uh, but then it's sure it's important that any mechanisms that are developed to uh, help increase premiums, that they are uh, consumer mindful and don't increase and make sure that they remain affordable. Uh, I put AB 2167, that was a, an important bill that died, um, but we'll probably see some version of that. So we're going to be looking at that closely to make sure we provide input. What can you do? I think it's important to contact the Department of Insurance with questions related to your specific issue or concerns. Contact the California Fair Plan. Of course, you can contact them directly, but work with their broker. I think that's important. They are for programs you may not be aware of. For example, an escrow program. If you're selling a house, you can actually get coverage through them during just escrow. So those are, they have unique programs that most people aren't aware of. I did want to note I, um, March 30th, 2021, uh, just in about a month here, the Department of Insurance is actually holding um, a, a public meeting to discuss wildfire risk models. We will be at that. That may be what Juan is referring to. Contact your legislators. And then also I put in here mynevadacounty.com slash fire insurance survey. I'll put that in the chat. That's give us information. That helps us go to our legislators, including uh, you know, your assembly and assemblymen um, and make the case for you. So I'm sorry, I didn't mean to take too much time, Scott. I will stop there. Okay, uh, thank you so much, Jeff. That's a lot of good information. And thanks also for the presentation. We'll be sure to post it. And uh, now uh, we have Jamie Jones with the Fire Safe Council. Okay, let me get my screen to share. One second here. Perhaps, there we go. Is everybody able to see? Yes, uh-huh. Okay, so I will try to make this brief. You know, in the, in the realm of things, I think, um, thank you, Wanda, and thank you, Jeff, for um, bringing that granular information that um, I think much of the community really needs to hear. Uh, and 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 expressing that you know it really is going to take some activism on everyone's parts to um, solve this issue, and it's not something that's going to go away immediately. Um, and and like the County of Nevada, um, we really do too have a limited involvement. Um, but what we do like to make sure that we do is, um, you know, we we want to bring you the tools and the resources of the community to help you guys fight those non renewals or cancellations and give you as many resources uh, to do that at low or no cost. And so what I'm just really gonna recap is, you know, in our, let's see, there we go. Um, you know, I call it the fire insurance call. What we see in our office is probably one in five calls is referring to fire insurance. You know, we've been dropped. We don't know where to start. What can we do? Um, you know, can you help us? One of the bigger things too is people come and they're new to the area 
they really don't understand uh, what it means to live in the WUI or what a high fire severity zone is, things of those nature or of that nature. And so we really try to give them the, the best information to help them navigate this um, and where they can start um, using our programs to help, you know, hopefully defend off non-renewals and cancellations. And even then we know and realize that um, that's not always a solution, but um, I always say, give yourself the best chance of, of doing so by, you know, performing uh, the activities that we recommend. And so um, with that, I, I bring you our fire safe programs. And we always recommend that people start with a defensible space advisory visit. Um, oftentimes, you know, I think a lot of carriers are starting to work towards um, on-site inspections. And so a defensible space advisory visit is a free program, no cost. Um, and then Many of you right now uh, are participating in this event tonight because you're part of a FireWise program. So um, as Wanda mentioned earlier, I think uh, FireWise programs in some situations can uh, receive discounts for your carriers. And so they are gaining more and more recognition um, and, and be, having that credibility of being a part of a grassroots community group that's working on wildfire preparedness and mitigation is crucial. Uh, we offer our roadside chipping program at low cost and no cost, um, depending on grants. And then uh, we have defensible space clearing services um, for those uh, who need it. We have access and functional needs clearing or defensible space clearing services. And we have applications for that online where we do free clearing for uh, those who may be low income, elderly, disabled. Uh, and then we also have low cost defensible space clearing services um, for those folks that, you know, kind of are somewhere in between, uh, maybe not, not qualifying for the AFN program, but will qualify for um, the others. And so, um, and then lastly, green waste events. And I, and I really just have a slide for each and, and these are kind of the benefits or the, the program outlines. So, being a part of FireWise communities is residents reducing wildfire risk. Um, with that, you get a community risk assessment, an action plan, community investment. And um, this is, you know, as it says here, is the potential for fire insurance discounts. Um, they want to see that you're participating uh, in these groups. And it may not always, you know, uh, be weighted heavily for every insurance. Um, company, but it is gaining more and more acceptance. Um, and I know that we receive calls daily asking about how they can acquire their certificates in order to supply them to their insurance agent for their discounts. Um, every little bit matters, I think, when, when rates are going up um, as much as we're seeing them. And then the defensible space advisory visit. Um, everybody here, I'm sure, is familiar with many. I see many of our advisors on the line here. Um, it's a free advisory visit operated by all of you volunteers. Um, your guys' knowledge base really helps the communities, our community members who uh, may either not know or are new to the area um, and really need this leg up on starting these activities. So um, it's education for homeowners to mitigate risk, helps achieve defensible space, and um, again, potential retaining fire insurance by doing these activities. Residential chipping program, um, currently it's a low cost program because you know we are asking for that donation um, and but we're hopeful that we'll have a grant to make that a no cost program again um, soon. So, uh, and that'll help residents do their immediate defensible space clearing as well as evacuation route clearing, which I know is um, a big concern for a lot of our residents in the community. And then the defensible space clearing programs, which I already mentioned, access functional needs for the free service, and then our low cost programs. I will be happy to supply this presentation for you guys to post. There are links directly in here if anybody's interested for more information. And then green waste events, those are also free of charge. We try to operate them during convenient or at convenient location days and times. Um, and they're highly utilized by all the residents in Nevada County. We've seen some astonishing participation, participation in the community. Um, and the current events uh, are, are still in the works. We're hoping to bring you another green waste program shortly and we'll be announcing
that uh, uh, hopefully in partnership with um, Office of Emergency Services shortly. And then uh, we try to keep an, a contractor resource page. We do it um, yearly. We, we vet those, those folks that are on there, make sure that they're insured and licensed. Um, so we have a resource guide to pass on to the community. And then uh, we try to make sure that while we're not the experts, we can direct people um, towards the pertinent fire information. You know, we've seen every, uh, both speakers reference insurance commissioner's moratorium on cancellations and non-renewal. That link is directly um, linked to the insurance commissioner's page there with the zip codes that are under that moratorium for the year. And I believe that runs November to November. And then we really wanna to continue to engage with our professionals in the community, uh, folks like Wanda Mertens, who has helped the Fire Safe Council out you know, many times in the past, bringing that insurance information to our organization and, and teaching our defensible space advisors um, you know, what, what the insurance companies are looking for so we can appropriately recommend the best actions on their, on their, um, their properties. So I will leave it at that. I know that our, our um, we have a, quite a few more speakers and I'm always available for questions. I'm happy to put my email and, and phone number in the chat. Okay, thank you, Jamie. Um, uh, Susan, did you see any questions um, so far? What we're gonna do is um, hold Kristen Cook on defensible space um, until next month. So it'll be fuels reduction and defensible space will be the topic for next month's meeting. So she'll, she'll be at the top of the uh, meeting instead of at the last. So um, Susan, did you see any other? Uh, only a couple. The uh, Scott Allen is asking, when is the next scheduled defensible space inspector class going to be offered? I think, I think he means defensible space advisor. Uh, he says, I know COVID has impacted these. Do you have any, any concept as to when you may be able to schedule one of those again? Yeah, so we would like to get one um, kicked off before you know fire season kicks off. Um, we still have several advisors from our last training that have been um, unable to, to partner up for their final leg of training because of COVID. Uh, but we are looking at um, an online format to that, a Zoom format, so that we can do that training. And then hopefully we'll be able to do the, um, the outdoor portions as well as um, more folks are... Um, able to move around in the community with, with COVID compliance. So I anticipate we'll see our next training um, early May is my goal right now. And I know we have quite a few people on that list. So um, feel free to reach out to the office if you are wanting to uh, take the refresher. Um, it should be a, a new format and updated information. So um, especially if we do it in a Zoom format, we can house a lot more participants. Great, thank you. And I think I will clarify since since the question had referred to defensible space inspector, the Fire Safe Council volunteers are defensible space advisors, and they come out for free, and they are educational people who are trained uh, to be to give advice. The title of defensible space inspector are the people who work for the county and enforce the the county codes. So even though both of those titles start with the word defensible space, it's the inspectors who are with the county, the advisors are the volunteers who give advice and don't in, report who or any, don't report what they find to anybody. <laughs> yeah, in addition to that, I think you'll see, um, I, we just received notice that uh, the defensible space inspectors will be, um, vis or CAL FIRE's defensible space uh, inspector team will be um, circulating Alta Sierra area um, soon, and so they should be coming out kind of in full force. So there are there are several partners, OES, the fire districts that do those inspections. But as Susan said, you know we we like to come from that educational component and and really base you know those best practices off of off of the local vegetation ordinance as well as PRC forty two ninety one. Okay. And, and, and that's really it. We had a question about uh, who's, who's coordinating the, fire, the advisors. It's somebody on your staff, uh, I'm sure. And, and, uh, so I actually will make that announcement too for those who um, weren't 
uh, at our board meeting, and, and I don't know that our board minutes have been passed, but uh, Pete Williams uh, is going to be taking over our DSAV assigning in, um, for the interim until we hire um, our positions that are open. Pete has been gracious and, and helping me out. I know that this is an integral part of our, our community engagement and program. It's our really our first contact point in the community. So we wanna make sure that we're taking care of those folks. Um, so Pete Williams is a board member on, on our board and um, he'll be handling that in the interim. And then I briefly mentioned that we're hiring positions. So um, I'm happy to share that with everybody. We have a couple of positions on our website that we're hiring for an administrative analyst and some chipping supervisors. Great, thank you. And those are really all the questions for the speakers. Uh, just for all the people attending, there are some various things in the chat, some links that some uh, participants have posted to various things. So you might wanna just check out the chat. And Scott Beasley has put his email in the chat. And uh, Jeff Thorsby, what is the, if you just, in about two sentences, can you describe that sur fire insurance survey link that you put in the chat? Sure, absolutely. It's um, a survey that we put together with Supervisor Ed Schofield, which is essentially just some basic questions uh, to help us kind of gather some information. The more, more people we can get to take it, the, that information essentially is used uh, when we go and talk to folks at the state to say, hey, listen, this is what we're seeing. Um, of course, there's a lot of other data we have too, um, but it's a way um, to really let us know. Um, and the more people, if, if we could get the most, more people to take it, it'd be, be good. Okay, so there it is, everybody, in the chat, www.mynevadacounty.com forward slash fire insurance survey. And uh, so we could get at least 50 more people to take that survey if everybody from here will go do that. And so that, that would be it. That's, uh, that's all Virginia, thank you. Okay, thanks Susan. All right, okay. thanks okay, Scott. to Virginia and uh, mm -hmm. Bob Garza for lining those speakers up and thanks to our speakers. We are moving, uh, Kristen Cook's presentation as mentioned to next month where we'll be focusing very specifically on uh, vegetation management and clearing issues, defensible space and the more physical aspect of, of home hardening. Um, we've got a couple agenda items left, and I'm just going to rip right through them. Um, in a, know that in a typical monthly meeting, we are hoping to have reports from each of our working groups, as well as about 15 minutes dedicated to community forum where we can answer all your questions and, and give the experts uh, some time. Um, only working group update um, we really have here is help wanted. Um, many of the projects that could be going on um, as related to next month's topic of defensible space, clearing, et cetera, um, just require a, a little bit of management. And, and Jamie's group absolutely um, handles that. Um, but if we could organize more within our own communities, there's more options out there. And you'll hear next month about a, a pretty amazing opportunity for um, some controlled burns. Um, but it's going to take some organization, and we're hoping, not overnight, but maybe at some time in the next 12 months, uh, that we could build a, a working group related to um, managing the different projects within the communities and bringing things together. So as an example, um, you know, there is grant money available for burning, and if you have half an acre, um, you stand perhaps a smaller chance of of you know, getting that grant compared to if you can band together with a dozen of your neighbors, piece together 20 to 100 acres. Similarly, for road clearance, there is money available on Cal Grants right now, um, but for me to clear the 500 feet of road in front of my house, um, not being a not-for-profit, um, just being someone in a house, um, not as likely as if we could band together and come up with 20 miles of roads that could use some clearing. So if you have a background in, I don't know, this could be a number of different things in any kind of management, community advocacy, working together, um, I'd love to hear from you. So um, please reach out to me and shoot me an email. Uh, it's, in the, it's in the comments, but again, it's um, white shirt, blue sky at Gmail is where to reach me. So if you have any interest in this, um, to be clear, we're not looking for, you know, people with uh, you know, consulting backgrounds and MBAs. 
we're just looking for people who, who want to put some time into this and, and help your neighbors pull projects together and hopefully get, uh, get some bigger things going uh, than what we have right now. Um, so um, with that, um, I think just, I know Bob's tradition was to start with um, uh, the, the poor humor. I'm gonna share with you my favorite read from the union uh, to end our, our meeting tonight. And that is a, a caller from Chisholm Trail reported men on a neighboring property cutting wood and having the nerve to burn piles in the rain. The caller was upset that their urbanite neighbor hired a crew to clear all the trees and was informed that this was not a criminal matter. So uh, yeah, that's what we're up against folks. So I appreciate those of you uh, for being, you know, those nasty urbanites that you are, uh, having the nerve to clear the brush from your properties and make things fire safe. Um, so um, with that, um, again, um, appreciate all of our speakers tonight um, talking about insurance as well as all of our partners from the, the county, from the EOC, as well as fire and law who, who spoke tonight. Um, and with that, um, we will leave you um, next meeting, first Tuesday of April. So thanks, everyone, for your time tonight. Take care.